it's very instructive. We started off with hydrogen. And so we started off with, um, we also looked at um, the laboratory preparation of hydrogen. And then um, I told you why we should use calcium chloride as a, um, as an, it's used to dry the gas hydrogen. Okay. Um, I, oh, I didn't know if I did mention um, that. They might ask you why is HNO3, that's trouser nitrate 5, dilute trouser nitrate 5, because it's an acid. Remember, we said hydrogen is prepared in the lab by the action of a metal on an acid. We did mention, uh, we did, we, I gave you H2SO4, I gave you, and I asked you to do HCl, but there are other acids. Those are not the only. There's another acid called trouser nitrate 5, which is HNO3. I did not use that for a reason. And this is the exact reason that dilute trouser nitrate 5 acid is not used in the preparation of hydrogen because of a strong oxidizing property. Because of its strong oxidizing property. And so, it produces water instead of hydrogen. It does not, it, it would not produce hydrogen, rather it will produce water. So that's uh, one reason why dilute um, trouser nitrate 5 acid is not used. Now, other ways of preparing hydrogen in the lab, we have um, other ways of preparing hydrogen in the lab, number one, Remember, we are talking about laboratory preparation of hydrogen. So look, let's look at other ways of preparing hydrogen in the lab. We have an um, action of steam on heated metals. Action of steam on... We have um, the action of steam on heated metals. The action of steam on heated metals. An example of such is um, magnesium or iron. Action of steam of heated metals. Now, if we are going to do that, that means we'll be having heated metals like, okay, let's use sodium plus H2O. Now, whenever you see H2O gas, you know that's a steam on heated metals. It's going to give us N A O H plus H2. Remember, OH is minus, N A is plus. So N A has an oxidation number of one because it belongs to group one. Group one. So, but if it's Mg we are using here. If you're using Mg, Mg belongs to group what? What's the position number of Mg? So, so, so it's going to be Mg OH2 plus H2. So you, are, you, you can balance the equation yourself. All right, this equation is never balanced, so it could be balanced. So this is how, that's um, another way of preparing uh, in the lab, preparing um, hydrogen, okay? Another way of preparing hydrogen in the lab. Another thing else, again, it's um, the action of, right, the action of sodium hydroxide on zinc metal, the action of sodium hydroxide on zinc metal. The action of sodium hydroxide on zinc metal. Okay. When sodium hydroxide on zinc metal reacts, it will be giving us coming. It's going to give us zinc plus sodium hydroxide. It's going to give us N A C 
two z n o two sodium zincate going to be giving us sodium zincate plus h2 all right so that is it the next thing else the next thing we'll do is um, preparation of dry hydrogen preparation of dry okay okay if we're going to be preparing dry hydrogen um like we said the hydrogen that was produced would pass through calcium two chloride would pass through calcium two chloride or the magnet would pass through calcium two chloride or uh, it's going to pass through calcium two chloride or it can pass through tetras or surface six acid it has a surface six acid is also a drying agent. Calcium two chloride is also a drying agent. So if you're asked, um, if you're asked anything about um, calcium two chloride, um, or if you're asked anything about drying agent, why do we pass any gas through H2SO4 or calcium two chloride? Most times they are being used as drying agents. Okay. Um, Let's see. Do, we, do you understand that now? Yes, sir. Now, the industrial preparation of hydrogen, industrial preparation of hydrogen, number one, hydrogen can be produced industrially by three different methods. One of such methods we have, it's um, from natural gas, that's from methane, from natural gas. Natural gas is methane, CH4. Now what happens is when natural gas is heated to a temperature of 1000, that's a thermal cracking. Uh, I wouldn't know, you've done cracking in SS1, right? Okay, it's one of the SS1 topics you've done, cracking. Now, cracking is actually the um, breaking down of large hydrocarbons, molecules of hydrocarbons into smaller molecules. So when methane, natural gas, is heated at a very good temperature, 1000 degrees Celsius, what happens? Hydrogen is produced. Now, this is exactly what happens. When natural gas, the natural gas, okay, let's, let me give up the formula. When natural gas, that's natural gas is CH4, that's methane, is heated now to 1000 degrees Celsius, hydrogen, hydrogen is produced, is given up. This is an example of what we call thermal cracking because we are cracking it, we are breaking down the hydrogen in presence of, uh, in the presence of high temperature, thermal. Okay, now the next thing, way to get hydrogen, it's number two from hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons, hydrocarbon. Now, when hydrocarbons such as uh, methane or propane is mixed with steam, is heated to a temperature, is heated to a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius in the presence of a catalyst, nickel, CO, in the presence of nickel catalyst. What happens is CO, that's carbon two oxide and hydrogen are produced. So the, and one thing we should know is that the mixture of carbon two oxide and hydrogen is called a synthetic gas. Now I'm going to do that now. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the formula. Now what I said was number one, it is mixed with steam. Number two, it is heated in the presence of a catalyst. 
So 800 degrees Celsius, 800 degrees Celsius, okay? Um, where is my stuff? Okay, now CH4 is mixed with steam. For us to know that it's steam, I'm gonna put gas. Now we have nickel catalyst. We have, oh, sorry. We have an 800 degrees Celsius. We have CO plus H2O. <laughs> CO plus H2O is formed. Now, um, CO plus H2 being formed, I, I, have you noticed that um, when you did um, carbon and its compound, this is a, comp this, what, what is this combination called? In carbon and its compound, this is called synthetic gas. It is called This is called synthetic gas. That gas, the combination of this or both, the combination of these things are called um, synthetic gas. All right, it's called synthetic synthetic gas. Okay, that's when you did the uh, carbon and its compound. We did something similar to that that these things are called synthetic gas. Now, another way of producing, um, another way of producing, now, okay, I didn't say something. I didn't say something. Um, when CO reacts more with hydrogen, now when CO, that's a mixture of CO, you said when they react more with steam, they give you CO2. For that reaction of the further reaction of that mixture, that synthetic gas, when they react more with steam, they give you CO2 and hydrogen. For that reaction, for that reaction, because they might ask you um, something like that. For that reaction of um, this mixture with steam, that CO, CO plus H2O, for that reaction of this mixture gives you CO2 plus H2O. Sorry, did I say H2? No, H2. Now, um, look at, I wanna ask you this question. If your generator, if the exhaust is placed inside your room, maybe somebody says, Hmm, I have a generator. I don't want to take my generator outside this compound. I want to keep my generator inside my house. And I don't want, because I don't want people to hear, I don't want people to hear the sound of my generator that I have a gen and it keeps the generator inside his room. And the generator gives light to that person. What do you think will happen after 24 hours? Sorry? You will become stuffy. This will become stuffy, and what will happen? What will happen? Somebody's raising up his hand there. Who is that? What, what else do you think will happen? Eh? There'll be what? There'll be lack of oxygen. And what will happen if there's lack of oxygen? Inability to breathe. And what will happen if there's inability to breathe? Death. Death. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. The person will die. Why? CO is a very poisonous gas. CO that CO is a poisonous gas. The person now. 
what happens is when your generator is placed inside your room, it releases this gas called CO, carbon monoxide, or carbon suboxide. Now, what hap why is it that when the generator is placed outside, you can inhale that thing that comes out? That's if it's outside, if you're passing, you inhale it. Why doesn't it kill you? It has reacted with oxygen and it gave you CO2. Now, CO2 is less harmful compared to CO, compared to CO. So CO2 is less harmful. Now, that's why um, um, I remember we breathe out CO2, I will breathe in CO. So your plants around you, that's why it's advisable to have plants around you because the plants around you, they take in this CO2. It's needed, they need it for their, they need it so well. Plants take in this CO2 and they give us the oxygen that we need. Now, this is what happens now. When CO here, when the synthetic gas here reacts with steam further, reacts with steam further, it gives you CO2 plus H2. Now, we need to remove CO2. How do we remove CO2? That's another question. Because they might ask you, look at, um, when we wanted to dry, when we wanted to dry hydrogen gas, remember I told you, in drying hydrogen, we need, in drying hydrogen, we are going to make use of calcium chloride, calcium 2 chloride, or we can use H2SO4. Now, in removing CO, in, in removing CO2, we use sodium hydroxide solution. Please write that. To remove CO2, sodium hydroxide solution is required. To remove CO2, sodium hydroxide solution is required. Okay? All right. Sodium hydroxide solution is used. Okay, because they ask this kind of questions. Now, another way of another way of um, getting this um, hydrogen of producing hydrogen number number three is is from coal. It's from coal, C O A L. Now, steam is passed over red hot coal to obtain water gas. Now, steam is passed through red hot coal, is passed through red hot coal, that means um, C is passed through red hot coal to produce water gas, to produce water gas. It's still the same thing. We use the reaction is C plus H2O, C plus H2O, giving you CO plus H2, C plus H2O. C plus H2O. C plus H2O, giving you CO2, sorry, CO plus H2. All right. Now, from coal, another way of producing um, hydrogen, another way of producing hydrogen, it's um, we could, we can also use another way of producing, sorry. We can also get it from, um, okay, we've talked about, we can also get it from water gas. We can also get it from water gas and um, electrolysis of brian. From water gas and electrolysis of brine. Okay. Electrolysis of brine. Now let's look at the physical properties of hydrogen the physical properties of hydrogen. What are the physical properties of hydrogen? How do we know that? Uh, colorless, colorless and tasteless. Sorry, you said what? 
What, what it's can... colorless, colorless, and okay, <laughs> correct. Number one, it's a colorless, <laughs> odorless, and a tasteless gas. Now, um, it burns in air, sorry, it burns in air with a high pitch sound. It burns in air with a high pitch sound. Okay. Um, when it comes to litmus, when it comes to litmus, it's neutral. It's neutral, good. And it's in soluble water. Please close. It is neutral to litmus. And that thing about hydrogen is. Um, it does not support combustion. It does not support combustion. It does not support combustion. Okay. Um, and I think another one is that um, it is 14.4 less dense than air. It is 14.4 less dense than air. Okay. Um, let's look at some reactions. That's chemical properties of hydrogen. Chem we've looked at, we've done that before. Chemical properties of hydrogen. Number one, um, talk about the hydrides. Hydrides. I've told you about hydrides before. Um, one of such hydrides, it's a, uh, one of such hydrides we've looked at is uh, we've done that before. Let's see if we could do that again. We did that yesterday. Li plus H H two is going to give us Li H. So lithium hydride going to give us lithium hydride. So um, that is one. Nothing else we could talk about is um, we talked about hydride. That's metallic hydride. So the one I just did now was metallic hydride because it's reaction with metals. Now the, other, the next one we're looking at is non-metallic hydrides. Non-metallic hydrides. Okay. Now um, we have fluorine plus hydrogen. Fluorine plus hydrogen giving you hydrogen fluoride, giving you hydrogen fluoride. We also have chlorine plus hydrogen, giving you hydrogen fluoride. Okay, fluorine plus hydrogen, that's non-metallic hydride now. We have um, fluorine plus hydrogen, giving you hydrogen fluoride. Now we have chlorine chlorine plus hydrogen giving you plus hydrogen giving you hydrogen chloride. Okay. Now but one thing we should know about this reaction with chlorine is that the reaction with chlorine is explosive in the presence of sunlight. The reaction of, with chlorine is explosive in the presence of sunlight. Now, hydrogen, another thing we should know is that um, hydrogen reacts with sulfur to give you that rotten smell of an egg. I wouldn't know if you guys, did you guys do anything on hydrogen sulfide in the lab? Okay, sorry, you were, you were, that was online. When you come to the lab, I think I've done that for those students then before. Hydrogen um, sulfide smells like egg. If you bring it somewhere around you, it smells, very, it smells like rotten egg, rotten egg. So, Hydrogen reacts with sulfur to give you hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide smells like rotten egg. That's how you recognize that this, oh, I recognize the smell is a rotten egg smell. Just now that's hydrogen sulfide. Um, remember sulfur, okay, I didn't, 
give you that from let me give you that okay that's a um, plus sulfur plus sulfur giving you hydrogen sulfide all right the next one is a um, um that that's one that smells like protein F. the next one is hydrogen plus nitrogen hydrogen plus nitrogen gives you ammonia ammonia smells like urine that have stayed for a long time jesus this is very common i heard you you've got have you perceived ammonia before yeah yes Oh God, smells like urine. Smells badly like urine. Okay. Now, so that's hydrogen. Now, hydrogen, another one is this hydrogen bonds in air with a pop sound. When you take a lighted splint, that's a test for hydrogen. You take a lighted splint, put it where hydrogen is, it makes it sound pop. That's how you know, oh, this gas is hydrogen. Oh, it burns in air with pop sound, with formation of water, formation of a steam. Hydrogen burns in air. Hydrogen, it burns in air. This is a formula here. It burns hydrogen, burns in air, and then with a lighter splint, it gives you steam. So these are, this is a test for hydrogen. This is a very common test for hydrogen. That it burns in air with a lighter splint and gives you a pop sound, a very good pop sound. So um, what else, what else should we talk about hydrogen? Okay, another thing is um, hydrogen is, okay, that's, that's very, very instructive, the one I gave you. Okay, let's look at the. We've spent a long time in hydrogen and our time is almost going. Um, remember, it must be a lighter splint. Remember that. It must be a lighter splint. Um, um, that's about hydrogen. Now, don't worry, let's go to the questions because we are meant to do oxygen now if i do that i don't i doubt if we will solve any question i will just forget about it so let's solve some questions some of these questions is, are going to help us okay as you can see is deeper life CA2 2017, 2018 question. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm coming. Uh, I think once we start solving the questions, it would. Okay, once we start, once we start solving questions, once we start solving questions, it's gonna help us to touch other areas, all right? So let's still keep that down. Where is this question? Please come up. Come up, come up, come in. Mm -hmm. um, why is it taking time? Come on. Are you seeing anything yet? No. Okay. What about now? Yes. OK. 
Okay. Is it clear to you? Are you is there anything are you seeing any other thing? Yes, I am. It's clear, right? Yes. Okay. Let's solve this question now. Are you seeing a small box down? Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's see this. Um, oh, what's happening now? What's happened to this? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Um Okay. Are you seeing it now? Yes. Okay. I guess it's better now. Now, which of the following metals will displace hydrogen from steam? Which of the following metals will displace hydrogen from steam? Look at it there, A, B, C, D. Which of them? Okay, um, this question is testing our knowledge of um, activity series, reactivity series, electrochemical series. Have you heard of that word before? Activity series, reactivity series, or electrochemical series? Have you heard of that word before? Mm. Eh? Only reactivity. Okay, reactivity is the same thing. Now, in order of reaction, in order of reaction, um, let me show you something. In order of reaction, sodium comes, sorry, not sodium, yeah, sodium. Where am I right? Let me change this. In order of reaction, sodium comes first. You've seen it, please, I need you to master that, and that thing is needed. It helps in reaction. Ca2 plus comes second. I think third is magnesium. The next one is aluminum. Ahead, zinc comes next. Now, the next one we start having is uh, hydrogen. Now, listen, anyone that is higher, like sodium, can displace, remove any other element if they are reacting with anything. Sodium can remove any element that is below it. Calcium can remove any other element below it. Magnesium can remove any other element. We call it displace. Aluminum can remove any one below it. Now, after this one, I think PB is, PB should be down. Then we start having silver, AG, we have gold. So with what I've explained to you now, what is the answer? Magnesium. Magnesium, good. Answer is magnesium. Number two, how many neutrons are there in hydrogen atom? One. Are you serious? That's not the answer. Hydrogen has one neutron. Are you serious? Zero. Zero, come on. Don't answer any questions anyhow. Think about it first. The bond between oxygen molecules is what? The bond between oxygen molecules. Now, let me give you a clue. Any any bond that has to be sharing of electron. What valence. bond? 
covalence, good. Number four, one of these is not a class of oxide. Remember we have oxide, different types of oxides in oxygen and its compounds. So we, are, we have entered oxygen and its compounds now. So which of the following is not a class of oxide? Remember, we have um, acidic oxides, right? Types of oxides, we have number one, acidic oxides. That means acid reacting with um, an acidic compound, reacting with oxygen, like CO2 is an acidic oxide. CO2, SO2 is an example of acidic oxides. Number two, we have basic. Basic oxides are base, reacting with oxygen an example is sodium oxide all right sodium oxide is an example of basic oxide number three we have um, amphoteric oxide amphoteric oxides are neither basic nor acidic an example is zinc zinc oxide zno zno is an example of basic sorry is an example of um, Amphoteric oxide. Sorry, acidic oxide is CO, not CO2, please. Acidic oxide is CO, not CO2. Now, um, the next oxide we have is neutral oxide. Neutral oxide is CO2. It's, they are neutral. They are neutral to, they are neutral. Uh, amphoteric oxides are both basic and both acidic. Amphoteric oxides are both basic and both amphoteric and both um, neutral. Sorry, both acidic and both basic. They have the characteristics of basic oxide and acidic oxides. But neutral are neither acidic, neither basic. So they are neutral. An example is CO2. Okay, so number four, which of the following is not a class of oxide? Hydroxide. Hydroxide, good. Hydroxide is under basic oxide. Number four, number five, sorry. Hydrogen atom is similar to group one because. Good, five, you see, has an electron in the atom shell. Okay. Coming. Okay, number six. Number six, which of the following statement about chlorine and iodine at room temperature is correct? At room temperature means at normal temperature, normal, 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, the answer is um, chlorine is actually a gas and iodine is Chlorine is a gas at room temperature. Iodine is um, chlorine. Sorry, iodine is solid at room temperature. Number seven. Number seven. In the reaction, NO two acts as dash. In the reaction, okay, oxygen acts acts as what, not NO2. Now, when we talk about oxidation and reduction, oxidation is the addition of oxygen. Reduction is the removal of oxygen. I'm not seeing your face. Hello? 
Hello. Are you there? Number eight, group seven elements are good oxidizing agents. All right. Number nine, by sharing <coughs> its single electron, hydrogen forms what kind of bond? By sharing a single electron, hydrogen forms what kind of bond? Number nine. Covalence. Covalence. Number 10. One of the following is not an halogen, or it's not a halogen. That means one of the following is not group seven. Which one is not a group seven, a group seven element there? Can you tell me? Oxygen. Oxygen, good. Fluorine is part of, bromine is, is it, iodine is it, oxygen is group six, rather. Number 11. Number, number 11. A hydrogen atom which has lost an electron contains what? An hydrogen atom which has lost an electron contains what? Mm. One proton. Hello? Are you there? Yes. An hydrogen atom which has lost an electron contains only one proton. That means no more electron. Now there's one proton there. All right? Number 12. Which halogen is solid iodine. root at room temperature? Iodine. Good. It was repeating itself. Which oxide can react with both acid and base? Which oxide can react with both acid and base? I told you this. I've explained this. Neutral. Ah uh ah. -uh. No. Neutral is one that cannot react with acid or base. I said they are neither acids nor base. Tell me, come on. I told you one has the characteristics of both acidic and basic. Which, which what is that? Amphoteric. Amphoteric. C. Good. Number fourteen. The use of hydrogen in balloon is due to what? The use of hydrogen in balloon is due to what? Remember, I told you hydrogen is fourteen point four less. Then, Low density. Sorry. Is low density. Low density, good. Number 15, which of the following oxide is basic? Which of the following oxide is basic? Remember, look for anything that looks like a base there. And most bases are group one and group two. It is looking at you there, staring at you by your face. Which oxide is basic? Which oxide there is basic? Okay, if you don't know, it is a, yeah. no, A is, A is acidic rather, or A is not A, it is D, calcium oxide. Calcium looks like a base. Is, calcium is group two, calcium oxide. Okay, number 16. Which of the following statements is true of hydrogen isotopes? They have similar Ooh, chemical properties. Similar properties. Okay. Number 17. Which of this is an allotrope of oxygen? Allotrope. Oh, oxygen has an allotrope called ozone, O3. Write that. Ozone is an allotrope of oxygen. Write that. Ozone, O3, is O3 is an allotrope of oxygen, all right? Number 18, which of the following acid is not suitable for preparing hydrogen gas in the lab? 
Ah, I told you this one. Yes, this was the first thing I told you today. Ah, if you don't know this one, I will slap you from here. <laughs> B. B, correct. HNO3. Good. Number 19. Oxygen reacts with non metals to form what? Oxygen reacts with non metals. Remember, non metals most times are acidic. So, oxygen reacts with non metals to form what? Acidic, acidic oxides. oxides because they are acidic. Acidic oxides are oxides that are oxygen reacting with non metals, mostly non metals. Number 20, the order of reactivity of halogen is dash, is what? Okay, let me just tell you, then you tell me the one. Fluorine comes first. Fluorine is highly reactive, followed by chlorine, followed by bromine, followed by iodine. So what's the answer here? D. D. Chlo fluorine comes first, chlorine second, bromine third, iodine the next one. Okay. Okay. Um, this is... a. Um, they're not going to ask you. Okay, you guys are doing online, so it's not going to be theory. Uh, it's not going to be theory. All right, good. I guess we've done well. You've done well. I'm proud of you. Clap for yourself. You want to clap for yourself? <laughs> okay. Um, let's see if um, do we have any other question? Yeah, I guess we're done. Now we've used. Thank you, sir. Sorry? Thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. So, um, I wish you the best in your exam in your exams tomorrow. So just go through the questions. Um, um, just go through them again and work with them. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for how far you've helped us. I pray for your daughter wisdom, understanding in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Have a wonderful time. Amen. Bye.